perhaps you are saying God has forgotten. God has forsaken. You are, you are mistaken. He does not forsake you. He said, I do honestly remember him still. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for your word today. Thank you for what you have prepared for us today. Thank you for what you have ordained today to be for us. We give you praise. In the name of Jesus. Today is a day of remembrance. And like I said, get ready for the remaining days of this year. Because we are going on a ride with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. Like I was just saying, God does not forget his own. Circumstances may make you think God has forgotten you. The issues of your life, are you following me, may make you think God has forsaken you. But God does not forsake his own. He does not forget his own. Many a times you are reading the scriptures and you see he did this, he did that, and you are wondering, uh -uh. just like Gideon said. You remember what Gideon said? When the angel came and said to oh, Gideon, Thou mighty man of valor, the Lord is with you. He said, Excuse me, wait. I've read this book. I've seen all that he did. You can't say he's with me because if he's with me, he should be doing those things. Do you understand? We think that way. But the way God sees you is different. We're wondering, when is it going to be mine? Listen to me. God does not change. God cannot change. He said, I am the Lord. I do what? I change not. Jesus Christ, what? The same. Yesterday, today, and forever. He does not change. He cannot change. Jesus Christ is the same. Can I hear you say the same? The same. I didn't hear it. I said, can I hear? The same. Okay, you're trying to come up with it again. Maybe you have not eaten breakfast like you did for this one. When you read the scriptures, they are to give you hope. Hope of what he will do. Because he said, what I say unto one, I say unto all. God is not a respecter of persons. For in every nature, everyone that calls upon him is accepted of him. Amen? 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11. Now, listen, all these things happen unto them for examples. And they are written for our admonition upon whom the hands of the world are come. We have all let him that thinks he stands taking less it fall. He said, there are no temptations verse 13. Taking you, but such as is common to men. Oh, pastor, you don't know my story. You don't know what I've been going through. He said, there is nothing taking you, but such as is what? Common to men. We've seen it before. Solomon summarized everything. There is nothing new where? Under the sun. He said, but God is faithful. Can I hear you say God is faithful? Hallelujah. I want you to open up in a new way that my God is faithful, my God is able, and I'm ready for his response. Amen? That there is nothing new under the sun. He's done it before, he'll do it again. Amen? He's done it before. The scripture is speaking in, in Deuteronomy 32. He said, ask your fathers, they will tell you. Consider the years of many generations. Ask your fathers, they will tell you. 
when the most high divided to the nations their inheritance. So there are stories all through his word that are showing the manifestation of his power. And if he did it to them then, he's the same. Amen. We had men who had encounters with him. Daniel, for example, was a captive in a strange land, yet he ascended. Amen. There was nothing they did not do to bring him down. He will stay there. Why? There's a God in heaven assist to the affairs of men on earth. Job was writing, Job 10 verse 12. He said, Thou has granted me life. Who grants life? <laughs> That's why the one who didn't give you life can't be the one to take it. The sickness will take your life. There's no one that can take your life because he didn't give it. He said, Thou hast granted me life and favor, and thy visitation has preserved my spirit. Now you say, Thy visitation has preserved my spirit. The problem is this God is everywhere present, yes. He's everywhere at the same time. Yes. But then God visits. Amen. He does what? May you not be missing when he's visiting. That's the funny part of it. And that's not even funny. The sad part of it. When he comes on a visit, may you not be missing. How do I know God visits? It's not just as he's written. The Bible told us of Abraham one day. No arrangement, no party going on, no invitation of any celebration. He was just under the tree in his, in his place, enjoying the cool day sun, perhaps. And then all of a sudden, he lifted up his eyes and he saw three men. <laughs> no arrangement, no announcement, and the Almighty appeared. Change. That was the day the Almighty told him, your, your, your wife, at this time, according to the time of life, will give birth to a son. And they follow him. Even the madam inside there, I don't think these people know. I don't know where they came from, but I don't think they know what they are talking about. Because it has ceased with her. The Bible says, according to the manner of women. It was a closed case. You understand me? But that was a visitation without announcement. What if it was not home? He said, let me go visit the Reverend Amino. And let's share the, the coach, the full and the people brought for him. Let's eat it together that day. And he came and he was not found. Where God will meet with you, may you never be missing there. And that's why the Bible writes that in Genesis, and God visited Sarah, as he has said, and God did unto Sarah, as he has spoken, and Sarah conceived, and gave back to a child. You get my point? By that visitation. God visits. He's everywhere present, but he visits. <laughs> and today is our day of visitation. Jesus was talking one day, in Luke 19, verse 44. If, I, if you start from like verse 41, we don't go to verse 1, let me just paraphrase it. I was talking about, uh, if, at least if thou hast known, at least in this thy day, the things that belong unto thy peace. He said, but because you don't know it, you are grounded. That's the, the issue. God is saying, the remaining days of this year, no missing, this is what I want to do. Oh, we've had that before. Okay, what is different from the many days of this year to the ones we just be talking grammar? He said, because you don't know, 
You are grounded. You are defeated. And he summarizes it again in verse 44. He said, And they shall lay thee with the ground, and thy children within thee, and they shall not live in thee one stone upon another. Why? Because thou knowest not the time of thy visitation. They've been praying. Nobody prayed more than the Jews. That time, the Messiah had to come. But the prayer is still going on. He has come and come. Hallelujah. Today is a day of remembrance for you. And that's why there are things you do when God remembers. There are things you do again to provoke remembrance. There are things you do to connect with the remembrance. Everything goes together. Amen. Samson Samson. We all know the story. Great things. Then he sinned. And the Holy Ghost departed. They took the great man. They flogged his house. They turned him to slavery. Making sport for them. And then one day, Samson prayed a prayer. That's the prayer you should be praying as I'm preaching today. Judges 16 and verse 28. I cut it short in my notes. Samson called on the Lord and said, O oh Lord God, do what? Remember me. Stop. Of course, you see the other ones. Say, only oh, this one. And God gave me one. Some preachers like Pastor Amino have said, if you have said, God, remember me 20 times, God will do it 20 times. Because God gives to who God desires. So that's why I said, I cut it short in my notes. Oh, Lord, do what? Remember me. That should be your prayer. No matter what has transpired, no matter what has happened, the summary of the answer is, oh, Lord, remember Remember me. Because you know what happened there. <laughs> God remembered him. The Bible says he killed more that day than all that he has ever killed. And you know, Samuel was a killing merchant. But the day God remembered him, he did more than he has ever done. That would be your story. woman also who cried that cry. Her name was called Hannah. You know the story. No child. Being in torment. And then he became a tormentor himself, herself. Tormenting everybody. Husband, everybody. But then one day she got the secret. Have been talking to I've been crying out to the wrong people. There is answer in only one person, the Almighty Himself. He said, wherever he is, I'm going to find him. She broke protocol, if you know what I mean, in their days. Women don't go to where she went. She broke all the, the protocols that were given by God Himself. She, she broke it. <laughs> and God couldn't do anything. She broke protocol and went in. And what did she say again? First Samuel chapter 1 verse 11. Because they, are, they always have stories around. They should vow a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if that we did look on the affliction of thy handmaiden, and do what? Stop. And remember me. That's why I say, all oh, you should be crying to him as I'm preaching without disturbing my prayer. Oh God, do what? Today, remember me. Hallelujah. And truly, look at verse 19. Read the last line. And the Lord what? Case closed.
oh Lord, remember me. And the Lord remembered us. It's an interesting story also of another man. This one was a criminal. He was a thief. Condemned. On the cross. Just a few minutes to die. That's what you should call the great escape. You know the story I'm talking about. While one was making fun of him, the one that one said, Lord, Remember me when you get to your father's kingdom. Don't mind him. He was an unbeliever. He was a thief. So he tried to stretch his faith in a way. Remember me tomorrow or next week when, we, when you get to your kingdom. You know the story, right? <laughs> Every time God, God hears the cry of remembrance, he does not delay. I will show you. Come with me to the book of Luke. I need you to look at it. Verse, that chapter 23, the man said in verse 42, Lord, remember me when thou comes into thy kingdom. Ah, Jesus said, you are wasting your time. Verse 43. Please, everybody read verse 43. Stop. The man is saying, remember me when you get there. Jesus said, don't worry. It's today. Today. The day you cry is that day. It's not tomorrow. It's the day you cry. God, remember me. Lord, uh, Lord you know, by, by December, remember me. What is he waiting for? There is nothing you desire that he does not have in his hand today. He's not going to look for you tomorrow. Are you following me? He said, no, no, no. Verily I say unto you, Today is when you will be with me there. Not when I get there. Today. Remember me. Those who truly know how to cry that cry from their heart will get there. Please understand what I'm telling you. In essence, is that God is a God of time and season. He's a God of what we call divine appointment. And most of the time, this divine appointment eludes us. Why? Because we are not sensitive. Just like Jesus said, because thou knowest not the time of death. Sensitive. God is present everywhere. God manifests himself through all times, but at the same time, is a God of times and seasons. And he has what he calls dispensation. So he chooses for one a dispensation and chooses another dispensation for another. And when he said, this period, this is what I will do unto you, then you do everything within yourself. Catch it in that time. Remember Elijah. Elisha. They ask Elijah, as Elisha ask me what I shall give you. And Elisha said, Let it not come, thy spirit come upon me. Okay, right? Uh, Elisha said, Well, no problem. There is a condition. If you shall see me. Now, please. Now, Pastor, you come. talking to me, what I shall give him. And I'm saying, if you see me. Does that make sense? <laughs> I mean, is he not? So why, why will he give that condition? I will tell you the question. Why will he give that as a condition? Because he's beyond this. You need to be able to catch things in your spirit. That's why you can't be telling him, if you shall see me when I'm taking from you. He's about to go. So, and I don't want to go too much into scriptures. And the Bible says, two things happen. Okay. Oh my God. You see, that's why it's not good to be using senior pastors as your example. They disturb your message. I have to go back there now. 
I want to show you something very quickly. Um, he said, if you shall see me, Second Kings chapter 2. Let's go there. Verse 10. Second Kings chapter 2. Thou art asking her, nevertheless, if thou shalt see me, when I'm taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. Can you imagine? If you meet your appointment pretty much, it is. Now, but watch carefully. And it came to pass as they, they were together, still went on and talked that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire, one, and horses of fire. Are you getting that? Horses, we don't even know the number. And parted them both asunder. Read the last, next statement. Okay. Does somebody know how to read? With confidence? Now read. Oh, okay, stop. There appeared chariot of fire. There appeared horses of fire, but Elijah went up by a Of course, all of us grew up in, uh, I went to Christian primary school, Christian secondary school, so I was a Muslim. All of us who hear Bible stories will say, well, you even see the drawing of chariots of fire and Elijah on it, right? But Elijah didn't go up with the chariots of fire. He went up by a white The chariots was there, the horses were there, we God put them there, but they were distraction because the condition is if you see me. The, and look at, give me the next verse. You see something. And Elisha saw it. Did you see the language? He saw it. And Elisha saw it. He was focused. Chariot of fire came. He said, You're on your own. Horses of fire came. He said, You are wasting your time. This man. My eyes are not leaving him. And the wild wind took him up. And Elisha saw it. And Elisha saw it. That's what we are talking about. Focus. That's why you come to meetings. And most times not everybody gets things from God. Somebody is sitting there here now. He's already thinking of, thinking of what he's going to eat when he gets as that goes. And the mind, you know the mind, right? If somebody, the mind may already be in uh, as I'm talking now. Some of you just come to <laughs> Do you get my point? Be focused. To connect with what he has. The day of remembrance. Like I said, these weeks as we enter into them, be highly focused on God. That I'm not missing my own. Glory to God. Hear this. Jeremiah 29 verse 10. Hallelujah. He said, For thus fear the Lord, after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good I will visit you, and this is what I will do by that visitation. Every time he visits, those words you have been holding on, he performs. Those words you have been saying, how long? I thought I believe it. I've been confessing it. I've been saying it. I thought I saw it. I thought my spirit caught it. You use all manner of words to decorate them. Why wait 70 years? I don't know, but that's his appointment. He is the one who appoints. Glory to God. He said the same to Joseph in Genesis 15, verse 24. Or rather, Joseph told them before he go. He said, I die, right? For God will surely visit you. And when he visits you, he will bring you out of this place. And take you to the land that is swallowed in Abraham. So divine visitation occurs 
and God performs. There are specific times. Today, by his visitation, you are coming out of every land of bondage. Every land of pain and sorrow, you are coming out of it. You have to set your mind on it. Set your heart on it. Coming out of every land of incurable disease, no matter what is caused, no matter what the circumstances, by his visitation, you put yourself out on the line. Lord, as you visit me today, you do this. And your heart, you see, those whose heart keep crying along with the word are those who tap from it. Bring you out of that land where it's never enough. Just walking, walking, but it's not enough. Yet he said, and his hand shall be sufficient for you. You are coming out of it. Your heart must desire it. Your heart must crave for it. You begin to say like Hannah said. Like Samson say, like that man without name, even, but all of us are preaching him today, right? Who cares about the name or the act that you had with God? Begin to say, Lord, today is the day, remember me. Today is that day, you must remember me. Remember me. I've been on this journey a few years with you, but today is that day. You know, the psalmist said, it, Remember me with the favor that thou bearest unto thy saints. He said, Oh, visit me because the remembrance and the visitation of the poor and the man. When he remembers you, he visits you. You've cried for days, you've mourned for years, perhaps. You know, he said it about the children of Israel. I've seen and I've heard their cries, and I've now come down. The two goes together. He said that I may see, I think that's Psalm 106, verse 4. That I may see, the verse 5 says, that I may see the joy of thy soul, the good of thy soul, that I may rejoice in the gladness of thy soul. Lord, remember me. Enough of sorrow. Enough of pain. Enough of And other people speak to you and be lifted up. Enough of saying, look at him. Where is his God now? Enough. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Say again, how Jeremiah 15, 15. 15. It's not every of those major acts precedes this. He said, There is nothing I'm going through that you don't know. I've quoted scriptures. I've read Revelation to whatever. I've prayed that. They say, when you pray, give him his word. I've given him everything. He said, oh Lord, thou know. But do what? I didn't hear you. I say, I didn't hear you. Oh Lord, remember me and visit me. That's why I told you, the remembrance is what provokes the visitation. Remember, his remembrance will provoke visitation. Remember me and visit me. And when you do, revenge me of my persecution. Take me not away in thy long suffering, so that for thy sake I've suffered with thee. Remember me and visit me. That's what he does on the scripture. Said it, I've surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt. In fact, before that, actually, I think that should be Exodus chapter 2. The Bible says, He remembered his covenant with Abraham. He said, when he remembered that, he said, I'm going there. His remembrance is what provokes his visitation. And today, God has chosen to remember him. Let your heart keep crying. Eh? Listen to me. I've seen it. I've experienced it. I've read it. We sell ourselves short many times. As a man of God, we, if 
our office yesterday, we, were, we met ourselves during national service in Nigeria. Nigeria is 85, 86. That's pretty much the last time I saw you as a pastor in California. We began to talk and I wanted to push us. And I said, listen, let me tell you, I'm telling you from experience. God will meet the needs you put here to meet the next one. So if you cut it short, it's your problem. I said, please don't just overstretch your faith. But it's like the last church I pastored where this um, village man was. A young man came to share his testimony and I was very angry with him. He was a medical student. I don't know whether you heard that. He wrote an exam and he knew he didn't do well by himself. He didn't do well. But he kept remembering, I, I remember I kept saying, lecturer can fail you. Which hand is he going to use? So now say a child of God fail. Don't listen to them. They can't fail you. Whatever you write is correct. <laughs> so he now said, God, if you can just give me a C, I will be okay. I will thank you. I will celebrate you. And when the result came, he C. He now came to share that testimony. I almost beat him up. It's just like you. Who ask you to say see, You say, if there is something beyond A+, plus, that's what you put there. Because God will meet the needs you present before him. Don't cut yourself short. You get my point? We cut ourselves short. Why? Of course, pretty much, that's how far your faith takes you. You understand me? But God, oh, I want to sing now. <laughs> he got done all my problems. He got an old man. Can you find that song? Go, go find it. You don't know how to sing. Let me sing. You are very jealous. He got an old How many people know that song? I didn't see how many people can sing it. I see how many people know it. Ah. He got an old my problems. He got an old my pain. God is bigger than every problem. That can cannot face. You use different terms. The problem I cannot face are mountains that I cannot climb. My God is bigger than all my pro. Or oh, you want to sing it in Amharic? Bigger than all my face. God is bigger than every mountain that I can cannot climb. You can't find it. Okay, find it. We we'll sing it later. You know it. That's not what I said. I said, do you know it? <laughs> Glory to God. Please understand me. Don't cut yourself short. Do you get the point? God is bigger than any problem you can ever face. Are you following me? Don't cut yourself short. All you do today is, oh God, remember me and visit me. Remember me and visit me because God sees. God knows. We've said that before. If you remember, God knows. God sees and God is able. He knows. He sees. He hears. While you are doing that, I just put this in my note, Psalms 25 or 7. He said, God, when you are remembering me, remember not the sins of my youth. Did you see that? He said, remember not the sins of my youth nor my transgressions. According to thy mercy, Remember thou me for thy goodness sake. Of course, the blood of Jesus prevails for us. And he's speaking better things than the blood of Abel for you today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to begin to round up from where I started. Because that was the scripture in my spirit. Um, Jeremiah 31. That's why we read. If you, if you get up, read that Jeremiah 31 again. It's lovely. Amen. We'll stop in verse 20. That's okay. It's lovely. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 31 verse 20. We read it before I started preaching. Because that is it today. Is Ephraim my dear son? Don't mind whether you are female. The Bible says there is no male or female in the kingdom of heaven, right? So are you his dear son? Uh, many of you don't know. Well, you get born again today, we, say, we sort that one out. Is he a pleasant child? Are you a pleasant, is pleasant child? 
is a loop with all that you have got that have allowed to happen to you never you think for a moment that I will not Amen. Never you let it cross your mind that I'm forsaking you. He said, can a woman forsake a child a son that she has so many child that she may forget the child of God? He said, yeah, they may forget. He said, but I will never forget. He said, I do honestly remember you still. No longer him, but you. I do honestly remember you my poor wells are troubled. That is what we need to The Bible says, the Bible says, and I preach, you cannot be taught to the feeling of my heart. But he holds the Bible and the Bible and my heart. A black astonishment has taken hold of me. So he feels your He sees, he knows, he feels. So remember.
Never had that kind of problem because when you bring somebody to God, testify against they are talking for you. You just got angry. So why did you bring him to God? What kind of nonsense is this? Okay, he will retire at so 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 age. You will calculate all his money with benefit, with interest, and pay him. That's when God hit him. So I, and I just remembered he didn't really give me the tithe of all of this. But we'll talk about that another day. That's what divine visitation does. He made the king of Babylon, Dairon, Cyrus, to sponsor the rebuilding of Jerusalem with military efforts. I told you today. You have to look for where to put the visitation. Amen? That's why I say to you. Whatever remains represents a challenge in your life. May it is terminated. Hallelujah. His visitation commends his favor. But I will enter into that next week. We come from here because his visitation brings an impartation of faith that makes your enemies to begin to give. Get set for that also. But no for today. That whatever represents a challenge in your life is terminated today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The remaining days of this year will be the manifestation of his visitation. And I'm telling you, because I didn't come to do this by myself. Whatever be those challenges, terminal diseases, regular diseases, the one that don't even have name. You know, there are sometimes the doctors will check. They say we can't find anything, but the man still knows he's sick. <laughs> he doesn't have a name. Whatever they be, they are terminated today. Whatever be that oppression of the devil against your life. Making you wonder what is it with me? It is destroyed today. Why are we bold saying what we are saying today? Because the Almighty decides to destroy. When he visits, it terminates stagnation. You know how long Abraham has waited? Almost 25 years. Why is it? In fact, he gave up at one time. He said, God, as for this Isaac you are talking about, let's forget about it. This one is born in my house, right? Let's use it. And God said, no. When I say it, then I do it. But there is how I do it. There is an appointed time that I do it. And at the real time of his station, he visited Abraham. And Abraham fought it. And Isaac was born. No matter how late you think it is, it's never late. Day. By this point of remembrance, no sickness is permitted to remain in your body. No mark of affliction is permitted to remain in your body. Rise up. Who are before the Lord Himself. 
face to face with all the Almighty. Face to face before the Almighty. And I want God to be hearing your Christ now. Lord, today is that day visit me. Remember me. Let him hear you. Let your heart begin to cry that out to him. This is my moment of divine remembrance. This is my moment. Lord, remember me. that live and move it, without this river shall flow is here. By this symbolic touch of this anointing today, let the power of God come upon everyone. He said, it shall come to pass in that day that his body shall be taken off thy shoulder and the yoke from off thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. By this anointing, every yoke of evil is destroyed because a confirmation of divine destination determines the struggle 
it terminates the pain. In the name of Jesus, he vanquishes every opposition. He rewrites every writing against you. In the name of Jesus. He said, surely they shall gather, but not by me. He said, as many of them that gather together against you shall come upon that city. By this anointing today, every gathering together against you. I see them crashing right now. I see them falling right now. I see them all and they are scattering by this anointing in the name of Jesus. By this anointing, the Lord begins to open. The Lord begins to open. The Lord begins to open. What the present and help begin to open. Marvelous helps begin to locate. Even though you want to you could never have. Oh, by this divine decision. In the name of Jesus. I do this. Is that praying? What's going to pray? Come up to your house. Put your hand on your heart, your right hand. Your right hand and I want you. Thank him for the release. 